evening, everybody. Good evening. Good, evening. Good to see you all this evening. Hope you've all had a good couple of days since we were here on Sunday evening. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this evening. Looking forward to Pastor bringing the devotion on in a few moments and then looking forward to having a time of prayer together as well. Uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow morning, just keeping your prayers moments on top, starting back tomorrow morning um, after the summer break from 10 to 12. So uh, just keep everyone in your prayers there for tomorrow morning. And then we're here again uh, on Sunday, looking forward to having Willis McDowell with us on Sunday morning uh, for our second testimony uh, morning. So uh, it was good to see such a good crowd out on Sunday morning past. So just uh, hope and pray that we'll see people saved and they hear Amen. somebody's uh, the, the testimony of the Lord's saving grace that they too will get to know the Lord as their saviour. Um, but we'll open up with a word of prayer and then we're going to hand straight over to Pastor for this evening's devotion. Bless you, Lord. Lord, we glorify your precious name, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for another opportunity for us to gather together, Lord, for a time of fellowship, Lord, and to gather around your word, Lord, and to gather together in prayer, Lord. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for bringing each of us here this evening, Lord. Lord, we know that already you are here with us, Lord, already part of our number. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Lord. Amen. And Lord, we know that there's others who would love to be here amongst us tonight, but have had to stay at home for whatever reason. Lord, we also know that there are people who have made it out, Lord, but Lord, still need a touch from you, Lord. Mm. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would just place that capable healing hand upon Amen. them, Lord. Lord, that you bring them back to full health and strength from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord. And Lord, that you would surround them with your peace, which surpasses all understanding. Lord, as we gather around your word in a few moments, Lord, Lord, give us listening ears and open hearts for what we're going to hear tonight, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for Pastor, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Lynn as well, Lord, and for the blessing that they are to us here in Bali, Salamilam. Lord, will you have your hedge of protection around them and their family, Lord. Lord, keep them safe, keep them healthy, and keep them well, and give them fruits for their labor, Lord. So bless Pastor as he brings your word tonight, Lord. And Lord, our prayer is that there be somebody watching at home who doesn't know you as Savior, Lord. Will you speak to them tonight, Lord? Will you talk to them, Lord? Lord, we just pray, Lord, that if you would just soften their hearts, Lord, this evening, Lord, and we would hear in coming days that somebody has got right with you. Lord, as we gather together for a time of prayer later on, as I often say, there's nothing we'll ask for, nothing we'll pray for that you're not already aware of, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you that you're an all-knowing God, Lord. Yes, amen. And Lord, we thank you and praise you in advance for answer prayers, Lord, that we will receive. So, Lord, we love you tonight, Lord, and we praise you tonight, Lord. Mm. And we ask all these things in your precious name, giving you thanks. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, David. Hallelujah. Folks, if you have your Bible with you, or your, your Testament with you, turn up to the book of Matthew, please, in chapter 6, just for one verse. Praise the Lord. My title this evening would simply be this, Seek First. Matthew 6, please, in verse 33, says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And we know the Lord will bless the reading of his word. Excellent. What a wonderful little verse of scripture, beautiful verse of scripture in the middle as it were, of this great sermon on the mount, the greatest sermon that's ever been heard by mankind. In fact, I would go as far to say it's the greatest speech ever delivered of all time. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying this is because it left the lips of the Lord Jesus himself. I believe it's greater than the Martin Luther King Jr. speech of, I have a dream that so many people are delighted with, greater than that, greater than Winston Churchill's, we will fight them on the beaches, which stirred and rallied the nation, greater than JFK's, when he said, ask not what your country can do for you. All of those speeches, they were all great in their own time, but there's nothing, nothing that comes anywhere near to the wonderful Sermon on the Mount. And if you don't know where it is, it's Matthew 5 through to Matthew 7. But here, Matthew 6 and 33, Halfway through, as it were, this great sermon, the Lord speaks this amazing truth. And there's three very, very small points in this powerful little verse. The first he says is this, seek first the kingdom of God. We could just stop there and say, well, that's what we need to do this evening. We're here to pray and we're here to seek first 
the kingdom of God. Secondly, he says, seek his righteousness. And then, of course, there's the outcome. Because there's always an outcome. Folks, when we pray, expect an answer. When you sow something into the ground, you don't just walk away and don't expect anything. There's still something come from it, is there not? Whenever we pray, we are sowing into the kingdom of God, as it were, in our prayers, and we, we know that there's going to be an outcome. The outcome is the reward. All these things shall be, not maybe will be added, shall be added on to you. And of course, we know the little song that goes, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can praise the Lord for that because when we seek first the kingdom of God, when we seek his righteousness, then all these things will be added onto you. Folks, we spoke there on Sunday evening about reevaluating and having a look to see all the things that sometimes we're putting first instead of God. And we can't have anything first. Nothing can come first, only him. And here we are, we're in September, in the very first week of September, about to kick off all of our outreach ministries. Mums and Tots starts again tomorrow, and youth and kids starts next week. Our Monday prayer meeting starts again next week. We're excited about all of those things. But before we do any of those things, we're seeking first the Lord. Throughout the summer, I know that the leadership here and those that are involved in, in, in all of those ministries, we were resting. Of course we were. But in our rest, we were praying. We were seeking first. We were bringing time and time again those ministries before the attention. Not that the Lord has lost focus on any of those things. But we have set our focus and our attention on seeking first the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that's what we, we need to do. In every aspect of our lives, we should seek first the kingdom of God. Folks, we aren't supposed to be taken up with the kingdoms of this world. And I know you say, well, there's not too many kings and queens. Listen, there are lots of kingdoms in this world today. And the reason why we shouldn't be taken up with all of the kingdoms and all of the business of the world today is because one day, Revelation 11 and verse 15, and this is where you get all these people who say that we're living in Revelation 13 or 14. No, we're not, because it's a timeline. Revelation 11 says, There was a great voice, or voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Someday all of the kingdoms, all of the nations, all of the principalities, all of the, all of the republics, they will all come under the kingdom of heaven and the Lord will reign over them. So we don't, don't be taken up with the things of this world or the kingdoms of this world. Be taken up with the kingdom of God, which will stand for not only just time, but for all eternity. Hallelujah. Not to be taken up with the kingdom of of darkness as well too. Not that we ever should as believers. But the reason why is this. Colossians 1 and 13. It says who. And that's Christ. Hath delivered us. From the power of the kingdom of darkness. And hath translated us into the kingdom. Of his dear son. Think about that for a moment. You have been brought to the kingdom. Like Esther. For such a time as this. I think we should be excited about that. We should be seeking first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then, of course, every single thing that we need will be added on to us. Praise the Lord. We were brought into the kingdom of his dear son. So in every activity, in every situation that we find ourselves in as believers, in every moment of our life, in every moment of our service, we should be seeking first the kingdom of God. And I mean everything. For our families, seek first the kingdom. For our businesses, first the kingdom. Our finances, first the kingdom. The church, first the kingdom. All of those things. Whenever you get a word in from a doctor to say, if you've got A, B and C wrong with you, seek first the kingdom. Whenever you have to go and see your doctor, seek first the kingdom. All these things. And I know I'm going to be rabbiting all the way about this evening, but I believe we really need to get back to this because there are times whenever we're seeking all over the place. We should have seeking first the kingdom of God. When we prioritize his kingdom over all these other things, we, we seek first the kingdom of God. What happens with this? We conquer our worries. Folks, we all have worries. We all have concerns. There are things that will creep into our lives and will cause us in moments of time to, to, to wonder and to be challenged and to really cry out to the Lord. That's the time when we do. We conquer over our worries. We triumph over our fears. 
We win victory day after day over our sin and our shame. There's nothing in us, nothing that we can do in ourselves. We do all this through Christ. He can remove the worries. He can remove the fear. He removes the shame. He removes the sin. Why? Because he bore my sin. He bore my shame. Glory to God. And that's why we shouldn't be carried. And I believe that we should give ourselves over entirely to him when we seek first the kingdom of God. When we seek first the kingdom of God, we also declare a total reliance upon him. What's wrong with far too many of us today is that we think we can do it ourselves. You can't. You can't do it yourself. No matter, I don't care what education you have, what talent you have, even what anointing you have, you cannot do it on your own. You need the Lord. We need the Lord in everything. And when we seek him, we're, we're saying, Lord, we can't do it ourselves. Our lives and our testimony tell the Lord simply this, and this should be our hymn, I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. Whenever we think that we can, we've got it all together, <laughs> we've got nothing together at all, take it from me. We live lives full of joy, we live lives full of his peace, and we live lives full, lives full of his, his love. You know, the peace that, Lord, that God gives you, you know, he says, I give unto them eternal life, I can't be removed from you. He says, I give unto them joy, it can't be taken from you. But peace, the Lord says, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave you. What do you think the enemy's going to try and steal away? He's going to have you question your eternal life. He's going to have you miserable that you don't know whether you've got joy or not. And he will try to remove your peace. Bit by bit, by bit, by bit. And when you feel as if that's what he's doing, that's when you need to seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be added unto you. Then seek his righteousness. When we seek his righteousness, what are we doing there? The first time we're seeking, we're seeking his kingdom, we're talking about total reliance. But here we're declaring that we don't want to live like the world. There's far too many Christians today that live like the world. You can't tell them apart. Guys, when, when you're in warfare, you wear a uniform of the country. And they, the enemy, they wear the uniform of their country. And any of those who are wearing the same uniform get shot for being what? For being spies. The world today, you can barely tell a believer away from an unbeliever. We should be standing out. I don't mean to say we need to dress in black like Quakers or anything like that. That's just silly. But our lives should speak that we've been in the presence of God. Our lives should speak that we have been changed, transformed, saved by the blood of the Lamb. That we're not the same as this world. We're saying in our own lives that we want to be more like Christ. We want to be more loving. We want to be more forgiving. We want to be filled more with his grace and with his peace. Folks, I think we'd be much better people if we asked for all those things, would we not? Lord, help me to be more loving. Help me to be more caring. Help me to have more peace. Help me to have more forgiveness. Make me more Christ-like. And such examples of this righteousness that we're speaking of this evening and these are attributes that give point to the Lord. Now of course the righteous, he's righteous in his justice, he's righteous in his grace, righteous in his redemption, righteous in his salvation, righteous in his reconciliation and folks we preach a gospel of reconciliation and the crazy thing is this, that there are people today who are preaching this forgiveness and they forgive no one. They run about with chips on their shoulders and blame everybody and everything and all the faults and failures. When really they should be pointing the finger back at themselves. <clears throat> He's brought us into this wonderful gospel of reconciliation. Where in that gospel of reconciliation you'll see mercy, love and so, so much more. We see as well too in Colossians 1 verse 27. When we ask for his righteousness, the reason why we ask for that is that others will see Christ in us, the hope of glory. B.B. McKinney, an American evangelist, wrote this wonderful hymn, and I love it. It says, simply says this, When passing through this world of sin, and others your life shall view, be clean and pure without within, let others see Jesus in you. Folks, I don't want anybody to see me in me. I want them to see Jesus in me. 
I don't want to be making a name for myself. Those days are pff, long gone. I couldn't care less what anybody has to say about me. What anybody thinks about me. What even the church thinks about me. I'm only interested in what he thinks about me. And you know what I think is wonderful? He tells me every day that he loves me. In spite of who I am, he loves me. Folks, he loves you. In spite of who you are as well too. Isn't that wonderful? So folks, how do we do this? How do we do this? First, as, a, as an individual and also as a church, we need to seek his kingdom. Secondly, we need to seek his righteousness. In all our lives, and all our ministries, we need at all times to seek him first. Before we start any meetings or outreaches or anything at all, we should be seeking him first. And finally, all these things shall be added on to you. What a wonderful blessing. All these things shall be added on to you. Do you know what I think is really sad when you start reading a lot of theologians? And listen, I'm no, no theologian. I'm not even going to pretend. But you listen to some of these boys and they, when they read this verse... They'll say, well, you know, the completion of this is the previous verses. And what they'll point to, they'll point back to uh, verse 31, where all of this is about what you eat, and what you drink, and what you wear. And they'll tell you, don't be worrying about any of those things. Don't be worrying about how you, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear. And they'll say this, yes, the Lord will provide all of those things. He'll provide the food. He'll provide whatever you need, their clothing, every single thing. He'll provide those things for you. But I think that's an awful limitation upon the Lord. Because if that's all that you're going to get out of this wonderful discourse, then why does 5, 6, and 7 all part of the one sermon? You have to have the whole thing brought together. Now, we don't have time this evening to look at chapter 5 or chapter 7. But I mean, we'll have to go back to chapter 5 and say, blessed is, all those blessed, the Beatitudes. And of course, you go to verse chapter 17, and the verse verse says, judge not. Mm-hmm. We know that we have to judge things, but we don't judge them before our time, of course. But I believe that all these things will be added on to you. And what do I mean by, by that? It's much more than just your food or your drink or what you were. In the same chapter, verse 25, read it when you get home, as he gives us, peace. Why? Because he's in control. When we seek his kingdom and all his righteousness he'll give us peace because he's in control. Verse 13 of chapter 6 tells us this. He delivers us from all temptation. Verse 15 tells us that he forgives all our sins. That's wonderful. Not only that, verse 11 says he gives us unto us our daily bread. Verse 18 says he will reward our faithfulness openly. Praying in secret. Door shut behind you. God will bless you openly. What an incredible, incredible thought. <coughs> Folks, this evening, before we come into a time of prayer, as I bring this week's short word to a close, tonight, because we're going to seek his kingdom, we're going to seek his righteousness, expect things to be added on to you. Expect when we're praying for the mums and tots that people will come in through the door tomorrow morning. Expect that the youth is going to be filled. Expect that the kids is going to be a blessing this year. Expect that our prayer meetings are going to touch heaven and heaven touch us. Expect people are going to be saved. Expect the blessing of God. All these things are going to be added on to us. And as all these things are added on to us, we have to remember too that as he adds, his blessings are what? They are pressed down. They are shaken together. And they're overflowing. And folks, as I stand here this evening, my cup is overflowing. Praise the Lord. Why? Because I'm something special? No, because what he gives me is special. He pours in, and he pours in, and he pours in, and he doesn't just give you a limit. He doesn't just give you enough. It's always an abundance. I have come to give them life, and life abundance. Hallelujah. His rewards when we seek him. And I'll bring this, I'll, 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 I'll close. You know, when Elijah sought the Lord, he sought the Lord in the whirlwind. And he found him where? In the whisper. Isn't that wonderful, folks? Whenever Moses stood that day, gazing at the, at the, the burning bush, where was the Lord? Right there with him. And folks, as we seek him this evening, seek his kingdom, seek his righteousness, where is he? 
He's right here. Because his promise is this. We're two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. May God bless, bless you. Lord. God bless this word to you and for those at home as well. And we'll part now and we'll come to a pen of prayer.